I have made $65 million in sales across seven businesses and sold an eight-figure business in 2019. Given that I had zero background in sales, people always ask me, how did you do it? Today, I'm sharing my secret to achieving financial freedom and building eight-figure businesses. I've built a lot of my success off finding these truly gifted people and not settling for B and C players. That's right, people. It was the incredible team I had who turned my businesses from nothing to $65 million in revenue. I always say money and business come and go, but our relationships with people are what truly remain. In this video, I will show you the step-by-step -step process to finding a talent who will transform your business from a cute side hustle into a multi-million dollar cash cow. Two, how to recruit this A talent even if you don't have cash. And three, how to retain this talent so they excel in your organization. And at the end, I'm going to leave you with five key questions you can ask people to see if they're in the top 1%. Let's get into it. Who even is an A player? And how do you know when you found one? A players are dedicated go-getters who embrace challenges, find creative solutions to problems, and consistently deliver outstanding results. They work well on their own and work well with others. They think strategically, but they are also hands-on. Steve Jobs called them thinker-doers and have a high sense of ownership. Those were and are the A players I hunt for. Now, let's help you find your A players. First, identify the area of the business you need to grow and write what you want the A player to do. For example, you figured out sales and have a solid sales process in place, but now want someone to come in and take it to the next level so you can focus on the other areas of the business. From here, write a list of people who fit the A player sketch and can take one of these functions. Think about ex-colleagues, friends, or the baristas at your local coffee shop. Because as the founder of LinkedIn, Reid Hoffman said, I believe you should always be recruiting. The more your business scales, the more tempting it will be to delegate this task to others. Resist that urge. Which brings me to the next point. I want you to continuously build this list. Now that you're clear on your ideal A player and how to find them, you must actively recruit them. Keep an eye out for these exceptional individuals, and once you encounter one, start building a relationship with them. Invite them for coffee and get to know them. Share your vision with them and engage them with exciting updates. Show them how they can make a significant impact. Inspire them to join your team. Most founders don't reach this stage because it requires creativity and real relationship building. But this is what will make your business stand out. And now you've got not just one, but a whole network of the top 1%. This is huge, but you've got no money. How can you convince someone to go from an A talent to your A employee? The first step is a mental shift. Don't look at your early hires as employees. Instead, look at them as your co-founders. But what does that mean? Open up and share your personal story with them. Talk about what drove you to start this business and what challenges you're facing. Invite them to share their experiences. Maybe they face similar issues. Help them see how great of a culture you've created and how they could make a difference. Also, figure out what excites them and how they want to contribute to the world. Do you have a spot in your business where they can achieve this potential? But don't rush it. Plan the idea and give your eight talents space to get excited about the vision. Your earliest hires are crucial. They have the ability to give wings to your business or bury it underground forever. Just remember, the Avengers did not assemble in a single day. Nick Fury spent four years recruiting his dream team. So, you've got an amazing team, but how do you make sure they don't leave you? Your business can't succeed without them. In my experience, the key is to treat them like MVPs, not bench warmers. Here's how. First, keep your employees in the loop. Share big and small updates about the business, even if it doesn't directly affect their role. Ask for their input on a big decision you're about to make or 
an issue you're struggling with, even if it's outside their scope. And let them know how clients feel about the services. In my ventures, for example, I'm very transparent when it comes to sharing details regarding revenue, profit, and how we are tracking against targets. So empower them by building trust. Give them space to make decisions without micromanaging them. For example, you hire someone to run your client operations. Let them choose the project management tool they prefer. Give them a budget and let them operate within the budget and support decisions they make about resources and task prioritization. Let them be the king or queen of their domain. And then praise your A talent when they've come up with an effective strategy or a solution on their own. A players are ambitious, innovative, and typically long-term thinkers. If treated right, they can transform your business. But to get A players without spending a fortune, you need to continue to inspire them. So draw them into your vision. You may not have much to show for today, and that's perfectly fine. It's common for startups to start small. So instead, capture their imagination with the potential your business holds. Your business should feel special because it is. Others might have your ideas, but no one else has your team. It's pretty intuitive, but you'd be surprised how many founders lose their top talent to the competition because they don't do this. If you want your A employees to think and act like owners, you must treat them like owners. Like I said earlier, in my ventures, I'm very transparent when it comes to sharing details about revenue and profit. When we were barely profitable, we offered a few benefits, not even health insurance. But we didn't just add health insurance when we started to see green. We also added 401k matching, more time off, and cool benefits like reimbursement for books, reimbursement for gym membership, a monthly dinner for two, and even meal expenses if you're working late and did not have time to cook. We also offered charitable contributions on behalf of the whole organization to a list of causes that the employees chose. Also, you'd be surprised but some employees opt for non-monetary benefits like a flexible or hybrid work schedule. In our last eight-figure venture, my co-founder and I committed to sharing 30% of the proceeds of the acquisition with our team. Yes, you heard it right, 30%. That was unheard of in the industry. But these team members, friends, built the company with us, so why wouldn't we pay it forward? It's a simple equation. Take care of your people, and they'll take care of you. On one condition though, too many managers suffocate their A talent by doing this. It's the most counterintuitive thing a founder can do. Don't get in their way. Just give them space to unleash their talent and they'll take over and work and supercharge it. This is the number one skill you need to master if you want to go from an average founder to an exceptional one. The ability to build a people first culture. Remember, you are not just another CEO, you are Nick Fury, and these are your Avengers. Now, as I promised, you can download the PDF below to find out how to tell the difference between the top 10% and the top 1% of players. Oh, and if you want to see my journey building $65 million consulting businesses, click here.